We're live, Carol. We're live. Woo! Congratulations, Heather. <laughs> Something we've been trying to do for a long time. Good morning. Cheers to you. I'm going to find my camera. Woo! Cheers. Oh, I got my United Way sticker. Look at that. It's Friday. We made it, everybody. It's Friday. Happy Ooh, Friday, TGIF. Happy Friday. Isn't this fun? So Carol and I are coming to you live from the United Way office. We didn't know. <laughs> and we are celebrating with coffee with Carol and Heather today. It's Friday. We're thrilled. We're in the office. And we're drinking our favorite. We're drinking our favorite coffees. Give a shout out to Conscious Cup Coffee Roasters. My they're Kimberly our sponsor. Yes, Ooh. they're our sponsors today. I'm drinking my favorite vanilla Ella. I haven't had it in a that? long time. What's that? It's kind of like a vanilla latte. It's very special. And I went with the full throttle, <laughs> no, like whole full fat, fat today. <laughs> full, full fat, full sugar. And I decided I deserved it. You do deserve it. So it's delicious. And I went with my favorite. I'm treating myself today too, because normally I do like an Americano. Um, doesn't that sound fancy? Yeah. But um, this is the Sweet Honey Bee, which I'm a huge fan of lavender. And so it is like a little lavender. I think there might be a little vanilla in there. I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's an appropriate thing for you because yeah. I feel like you're the queen bee. I'll take so it to Sweet Honey Bee, <laughs> it's, your, it's like your dream. Janet Kay is on. Hello to Hello. Janet. Hello. Oh, here we go. Patrick White. Well, okay. Patrick, yeah. Right here. Oh, we are new to the technology, but this is just going to get better every week. Okay, <laughs> yeah. It's Friday. Conscious Cup is delicious. Let me tell you, I'm going to show you guys how great Conscious Cup is. They are our sponsors of Coffee with Carol and Heather today. And so a perk of joining us is if you download the Joe app, and I'm going to pull it up on my phone just so you can see what that looks like. You can do like a mobile order. So if you have your phone handy and you're a coffee lover and you love to give locally, there is this Joe app. You can order um, or oh download God, right to your phone and then can just couple pull up and then you can select them. See, there they are beautiful. Select them and do a mobile order. And so anybody who types in um, the coupon code UNITED, Saturday and Sunday of this weekend, so you have time, don't leave now, you can go this weekend and get your coffee fix for the fall pumpkin picking or apple, whatever you're doing, um, you get 10% off your drink. So um, we wanted to let you know so you can take advantage of that, what a great perk. It's always something great to look forward to for your weekend is a great coffee from somewhere local and we're supporting our local businesses. They're so good to us, Conscious Cup. So shout out to them. Coupon code United. Just download that Joe app. Hi, Kelsey. Good morning to you. It. it only took that long. As <laughs> yeah. long as it took for him to see it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Do you go to Conscious Cup? What your favorite is? Is there something we should be trying at the Conscious Cup besides our vanilla Ella and our sweet honey bee? Well, great to see so many people joining. Thanks, Thanks Patrick. Kelsey. Patrick's even giving the address. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He's one of our board members. Thank you, Patrick. He is the volunteer of the year. So it's no wonder that he's on and he is providing information and links within the chat. Patrick, what do you think of my outfit today? Uh, my daughter thought I looked like a pilgrim. <laughs> Lori for president. That's right. Well, it's that time of year. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So um, the whole point of what's brewing, Carol and I have talked about doing this for a lot, few years, actually. Yeah. Um, leave it to a pandemic to make this happen. <laughs> Um, we're looking on the bright side of things, right? So um, what we do a lot is have coffee meetings with companies who are maybe interested in running a campaign or champions who are already doing it and they're getting ready to do their campaign. So that is kind of where this idea came from. And we thought it might be fun. A lot of people just like to hear us talk <laughs> because it, we, have, we make work fun, you know, why not? And so we thought Coffee with Carol and Heather, um, the first and third Friday of every month, we're gonna, is that right? Yeah, Every month yeah. we're gonna be doing this. So we'll come to you at the same time. We'll have a coffee. We'll talk a little bit about it. And then we're gonna talk about what's brewing in McHenry County um, or coffee for a cause or any kind of fun thing yeah. we, can, we can think of. But we wanna kind of listen and hear from you. What is important to you? What do you wanna know about? What would you love to hear about? We've asked some people, we've got a ton of fun questions, kind of fun ones and then some serious ones. 
And we want to know, what do you want to know about United Way, about Carol Peters, about Heather Arnold, about our staff, um, the needs in McHenry County, United Way. Um, we are happy to take your questions. And the beautiful thing about this is we're also live. So we're going to say good morning to Carrie Friend. Hi, Carrie. Good morning to you, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Our staff member, she'll have to come and join us one day. Oh, look, my mom just commented. Hi, mom. Love it. Um, Love ooh, our mothers. Yeah. yeah. Conscious Cup Hot Cocoa. I'm going to try that out. So Carol, what's brewing? So, what's the newest, the latest? Well, I will tell you, it is campaign season. So all hands on deck. Our team is feverishly out in the community. And Heidi, who's on board, you know, out there this morning, has been out really outreaching to the entire community, engaging all the campaigns across the county who have already committed to running a campaign this year. And of course, that looks very different. Um, Heather knows that she spent most of the summer and early part of fall preparing for this virtual campaign. It's different, right? We're not in the companies actually presenting to 30 or 300 people. Instead, we're sending them video links. Um, we're, we're actually customizing videos, which has kept us really busy. So um, some shout outs for Mercy Health and First National Bank of Omaha, um, the uh, ABF team over at Poly One, formerly Poly One, they asked mm -hmm. us specifically to customize yeah. their videos so that it makes sense for their team as they're listening in. So if you are a company in the county and you say, I wanna support United Way, we'll customize the entire package. If that's what we need to do right now to help you share the information with your staff, we are, we are more than willing to do that. And we're grateful to Heidi and all the outreach she's done. And, uh, and our campaign chair, Patrick White, who's on this morning for his engagement and his excitement around taking action, right? We're encouraging our board members to really around really rally around that word, words take action and try to make things happen. Innovation is more important than ever mm -hmm. right now. So for the small business owners who are out there and you're really trying to set yourself apart in this situation, we've got the iPledge campaign that they can be a yeah. part of. If you're um, an individual in the county and you're saying, hey, I wanna get involved, but I'm not sure how, you know, there's lots of ways that you can get involved. And at the end, we'll share with you one of our newest ways uh, to kind of give back or give where you live. So mm -hmm. those are the yeah. things, you know, that it's are really very different. different. It's very, very different. different. So we're pivoting. Are we all loving that word, mm -hmm. right? We're pivoting on what we're, we're doing. We're being nimble. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't know. I think of a nimble and it really makes me think of a thimble. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Literally. That's, I grew up in the era when my mother was a seamstress and she sewed us clothing, which I never liked. But I wish I knew how to sew. My mom knows how to sew. <laughs> Speaking of Halloween costumes coming up, let's give a shout out Katie Hennessy, who is a volunteer Katie, of ours, is watching. Katie. We love Katie. We miss having all our volunteers and all of us together. It makes it so much more fun. Um, and Vanessa, Vanessa is what a great supporter, Vanessa. Yeah. Oh, and Patrick White has a question for us. We'll take some of these questions here. How are local partner agencies helping people during this crucial time? Oh, great question. Yeah. So, you know, from the moment the pandemic hit, I mean, they've always been champions in the community, right? Doing what they can to support the community. But when the pandemic hits, there are greater needs. Um, I think when I reflect back to the beginning of when this shelter in place took place and we were all right away forced to go home and stay mm -hmm. home, Every single nonprofit needed to quickly shift and figure out how to work remotely and how to still serve. Many of them, um, you know, moved to telehealth. So yeah. if they were counseling services or even medical services, I know the Family Health Partnership Clinic were able to do virtual, you know, appointments because they needed to assess their patient before they decided could they even come into the facility. Um, and we're probably still doing that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're doing well, that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, mental health services, which is great, and they allow now for people to submit to insurance for a telehealth appointment where before there was this resistance oh, to hesitancy. Yeah. So this is going to transform our medical industry for sure. Um, and then I think back to some of the nonprofits who were really stepping up with the emergency funding needs. So organizations like the Salvation Army yeah. received grants from the Chicago Illinois or from the Chicago COVID response fund and they are a regional organization. So in McHenry County, they had some funds that they could help like the restaurant workers immediately receive a stipend of some amount that they could then have to help pay rent or utilities or cover other expenses that maybe they had at the time. And they were like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna navigate with yes. this? The food pantries stepped mm -hmm. up in a big way. 
Um, and they obviously were extremely busy and they were at a point, I remember early on where um, Scott, who works with the food pantries across the entire region, and I can't think of Scott's last name at the moment, but he talked about the fact that a lot of the volunteers in those food pantries were older adults yeah. who needed to be home and be careful because they didn't want to get sick. And so, you know, we didn't really know how to navigate it, but those folks, some of them said, it's okay, I'll wear a mask, I'll social distance, they put those procedures in place and they were still able to help um, serve people with food. And they were putting the food, literally everybody didn't get a choice, right? You no longer could walk through the Crystal Lake food pantry and kind of shop for your food. You got a bundle of food placed in your trunk and you just a wave and that was about all you received at that point. But it was the basic needs that really they were stepping up to support and serve at that time. So I think the key is a lot of places are transforming, pivoting, yeah. you know, the need is greater than ever, as we know, and I think everybody can assume. Um, and it's going to be interesting because we're heading into that winter season. And right. so, you know, that's why we're bringing some of this to you because we can talk about some of the needs every week or every other week that we're doing um, this and kind of fill you in and stay abreast of what the community is needing and looking for and how ways we can help, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually very exciting because I think people are doing some different cool, fun things. Mm -hmm. um, and so hopefully that answers your question, Patrick. Right? Well, I know we had a question. We have a, had a lot of people ask questions online prior to today, which was great. Yes. Um, Nancy Henningfield, Vanessa Kandow, uh, Connie Jo Holmes. And so we're gonna get to one of those yeah. questions today. Um, but we're going to continue to keep the list and keep kind of sorting through them and, and moving them to the top and, and rotating them through so we can answer all of your most pressing questions. So, you know, feel free to comment here. And if we don't get to all the questions today, we'll certainly, you know, add them to the list and do our best. Yeah. I know that Nancy Henningfield brought up the 211 Community Helpline. So I happen to have the little flyer right here. You can see it. We have these in English and Spanish. Hopefully, oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> English, Spanish. And we're really encouraging, if you represent a nonprofit, we want to make sure mm -hmm. if you're a church, you're a food pantry nonprofit, that you ask us for these cards. We can ship them to you directly. You can make arrangements to pick them up at our front door, whatever makes sense, so we can get these into the hands of the people. We can also use our website. Our website has a 211 page. All of the information is there. Um, and it's, again, English, Spanish. There's posters, there's yeah. flyers, there's all kinds of great resources. So. Let's talk about what yes. 211 is, yes. right? So a lot of people may not really know, or they've heard about it, but they've never called it, or they're like, I know it's there, but I called it once and it didn't seem to really do anything for me. That's what I hear for people sometimes. They're like, oh, it was, it's fine, but. So the 211 Community Helpline in 2012 was launched here in McHenry County. Our United Way, some of the funds that we raised through our campaign are reinvested in this service so that it's available in McHenry County. All nonprofits, churches, organizations that help people with health and human service needs are encouraged to submit their information. So if you're a nonprofit, we encourage you to use it as a resource, but to also make sure that your contact information and all of your service information is in the database. So if you check 211, you can go to their website. And if you don't see your contact information as an agency, then reach out to us. We have the form. We'll send it to you. You can fill it out and send it directly to Susan Williams, who's their database manager, and it will get added into the um, into their queue so that if someone were to call, then they would have that information. Um, I see a question or something pop up. Um, Corey Tafoya is on from Harvard Community School District 50. And one of our that, United Way yes, board members. And shared that he shared 2 on one with a mother from school last week and she received great support. So oh, that's always that's good to hear. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So that, thanks Corey for sharing that. So one thing that you receive when you call, the first thing is when you dial 2 on one on your smartphone or your landline, you are gonna receive emotional support. Isn't that what you need usually in your time of, of, um, of need, whatever it is, right? It may not be crisis but you're like, I have a child who's dealing with some mental health issues and I'm not sure where to turn and we're not in a position to afford those services. So I need to make a connection with a counseling center. But you're like, there's hundreds of them, where do I go? So if you dial 211 and they will give you the emotional support and then they'll take your zip code, they will look up those services for your particular zip code. Now, depending on where you live in McHenry County can, depend in, can be dependent on the services that they're gonna recommend to you, right? Or the resources that are out there. 
they will ask how you want to receive this information. So they'll give it to you over the phone. And if you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you can write the information down or they will text it directly to you. They will email it directly to you so that you don't have to feel like you have to remember everything they're telling you. You can simply just say, please text it to me, which mentioning texting yeah. November 1st, officially 211 will have a texting feature, which is really exciting. Yay! And we will be woo, we will be pushing that out. And we're going to want to test that on November 1st because we want to see how it works. Um, but the number is 898-211. And so we'll share, that when, yeah, we'll share yeah. it when it's time, but we just want you to know it's coming. It will be a value add, especially for those of you who prefer to really, um, you know, text versus maybe talk. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it's our younger population, those high school students or, you know, junior high students who could actually be texting and saying, I need some ad additional support. Well, I think that's a way of the world. It it is. It's an it easy is. way to um, get services. And sometimes if you're not feeling like you're comfortable or, yeah. you know, now it's easy to either email or, or text as opposed to calling. Right. So it's a great option for people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. And we did also, just so everybody knows, if anyone takes the PACE bus system in McHenry County, oh. we were fortunate enough to have some posters made and they're on the PACE buses across the county advertising the 211 Community Helpline, which was a That's very cool. low cost way for us to get information into those buses. And we're thankful to um, the United Way of Batavia, Melinda and her team, who manages the Unite or the 211 Community Helpline, like they're responsible for funding it in Kane County. So 211 is also a national program in 94% of the communities nationwide. So this isn't just for McHenry County or Lake County or Kane County. If you have loved ones or friends that live out of state and they are struggling with something and they need added support, 211 is a valid resource to offer to your friends and family. Yeah. And I would encourage you guys to share. We often post, I would say like every weekend or so, um, a 211 graphic or on our social and really the thing that we can do is share and spread the word. You never know who needs 211, and it's not always necessarily who you would think. Um, a lot of times we get calls here in the office, even for like my, I live out of state, my daughter needs a little hand and can't, and so I'm calling on her behalf. So it's just really helping us spread the awareness so that people need it, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but we all know somebody who needs an access to a resource. You know, prime example of like, I have an elderly mom who needs help and needs to get to her appointments and I work. What can I do? There's access to resources out there for you. And so um, it ranges right. all kinds of people and needs and stuff. So it's really just getting the resources you need. It's 24 seven. It's confidential, um, bilingual. So we want to make sure yeah, that bilingual yeah, is important. Yeah. So sometimes people will say, well, is it just, you know, Spanish? And it's not. So if somebody were to call that speaks any type of language and they, you know, they will route you then to, they have like, not people sitting on call, but they have access to resources that can provide, you know, Polish or Russian or German or Spanish, whatever, you know, nationality folks are in whatever language they speak. So don't be hesitant to make the referral, even if it's somebody who speaks a different language. Yeah. Um, and speaking of our parents and like this being a great resource. So I'm just gonna share from my own experience as a, um, a child of two older adults, and many of you know this, that both my parents passed away in the last year. But what I'll tell you is that my mom and dad called me all the time. I was their 211 line, right? And at some mm -hmm. point, we as caregivers or as children or as you know, siblings of older adults, however this plays out in your life, maybe it's your neighbor who needs a lot of help and you're doing a lot of extra for them, passing along this phone number may provide them with an opportunity that every time they need help or they need a listening ear, right? Someone will answer that call and be there for them. And now it may not feel as personal, but if you're not available to take their call, they have an alternative resource that will take their call, will listen to them, and we'll talk with them as long as needed. It's not like they're gonna rush them off the phone just to yeah. end the call. Their goal, these are the people who work, so a little inside of inside of 211, what does it look like? So our United Way partners with PATH Crisis Center in Bloomington, and Bloomington is the hub of that organization. They handle 211 calls for a large percentage of the United Ways across the state of Illinois. Um, I think King County, or I'm sorry, Lake County's United Way 211 is based out of Florida, 
And I want to say like the St. Louis area maybe is out of like the Dubuque area that there's a call center that handles their calls. But for McHenry County, they're in Bloomington. So I went and visited the 211 mm -hmm. Pass Center in Bloomington a few years ago because I really wanted to understand it. I wanted to see what it looked like. So if I were to describe it to you, it might look similar to a classroom in, in a high school like Harvard, right? A smaller classroom with wooden floors, room for approximately eight people to sit in a cubicle. They're all tied right in, ready to go with a headset on. Uh, they may not have eight people at one time because the call volume isn't high enough to warrant that, but they have one employee in the room who is like the manager of the call center. And they actually coach the employee or coach these volunteers who help. And the, college, the, the students who are actually serving as the volunteers are doing this as an internship. So they take this very seriously. And they're trained. They're trained. Yeah. They go through an eight-week training. They have someone listening in on their calls. Mm -hmm. they're, they're there to really coach them. And it's, you know, think of it as when you're in an internship, if you were a social worker or a counselor or a guidance counselor, and you're doing your internships to learn how to help serve those who have health and human service needs. That's what they're doing. So this isn't taken lightly. This isn't, this yeah. is very serious for them. And they want to do the best they can for each and every caller and answer all of their uh, questions and help them with all of their needs and really unite them to resources to help them um, take care of themselves and their family and, you know, whoever else that they, uh, they're calling on yeah. behalf of. Yeah. So, so two, one, one. Woo! Keep that in your pocket. So we've got a few more people. It looks like Devin joined us. Hi, Devin. Woo! Nice to see Hi, you. Hi, Mary. So what else is brewing in McHenry County? I want to share, and then we'll get to our next question. Um, very exciting day here at United Way of Greater McHenry County. We are introducing Text to Give, if you what? haven't seen it on the bottom of your screen. Um, this is brand new to us, and this is another way that we're trying to hear what people want and reach everyone and give them that opportunity and take away that barrier is you can easily text to give. And starting today, we're launching it with Fundraising Friday. Woo. So today, if you text the word Fundraising Friday to 44321 on your handy phone, I did it already today. Look at, we've got a fun basket here. So you can text, um, and donate today, maybe five bucks. We have a friends who do five buck Friday, right? So if you want to text your five bucks, you get to be in a drawing to win this fun, fun basket. basket. Look Ooh. at, we got to really showcase. We've got some really great popcorn from the popcorn factory, United Way chip clips. We see me talking about them before. Um, this kind of goes with the theme of our kickoff this year too. We poppers, popcorn, popcorn soda, Acts of Local Love, which if you haven't taken that challenge, you have to. A megaphone. Megaphones. And then really, all that's fun, but you even get a cooler, a United Way cooler. So when you're social distancing out this fall, you might want to take this with and bring home your apple cider donuts. I really could awesome. use We should have brought one of those. Next time. Apple cider apple donuts. Apple cider donuts. Who's got the best? We need to know. Um, Wait, so, I wanted to say yeah. about the $5 fundraiser or the $5 Friday. So I feel like it's like $5, $5 fundraiser Friday. Recognize that too? What one? I, know, I, know, I don't know if we can say it. Are we allowed to say it? We don't know the legal ramifications. Yeah, we don't. Well, you're not going to you know, play music on a video. We learned that last year. Yes. Yes. Um, so what do they have to do? They just have to text in the next two weeks. Fundraising Friday on your cell phone, and you'll be entered in to win a giveaway of this fun basket. And we're going to announce it the next time we talk to you, which I should probably look up that date. Um, it's right near Halloween. Yeah, so right near Halloween, right? Yeah, but yeah, the 30th. Oh, yeah. we might have to be in person. Oh my God. We should yeah. be in person. Let me just look at the date now without the period, but uh, I agree. Uh, it is the 30th. Oh time. my God, that's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, so we'll come in costume. Wouldn't that be funny? Comment below. What should we be? I almost wonder if we could be like a duo of something, or we could just do our own thing. We could be a set of strikes. <laughs> okay, that's not exciting. We could be the. You, I've seen those ones where they're wearing like coffee. We could be a coffee. Oh, yes. Or we. I don't know. Okay. I, I'm sure people have a lot of fun ideas out there, but um, we'll think of something. It will be good. Well, then that would be fun. That would be really awesome. fun. Um, okay, so, and then you have two weeks to type 
uh, text fundraising Friday. And then we'll announce the winner and then we'll have another fun giveaway. We just make this fun, right? Yeah, that's what so, it's all um, And then it will help us with our campaign. This all goes to the campaign. This all goes right to our nonprofit we support. Um, so this is what I was going to say earlier. <laughs> Some of you in the community are not tied to a workplace campaign, right? You're a community member. You've been following us for years. You love what we're doing. You feel like you're a part of this community and you're like, what can I do this year? This is the opportunity, right? Maybe it's five dollars every couple Fridays. We just toss those five dollars into the general campaign, and it allows us to invest those dollars here in the county. And we are really looking. This year is going to be critical, right, for these nonprofits. So many of them are challenged. Ooh, Corey Tafoya wants us to be peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Love it, maybe. Um, but you know, when all kidding aside, the nonprofits in our county are really struggling financially. This is, I mean, they're doing the work, right? They do it every day and they've been so diligent and so committed, but it's the dollars that have, are going to be, a, you know, going away because people are in a hardship situation, right? Mm -hmm. People often, when they say I've lost my job or I've been furloughed or I lost hours this spring and I, how am I going to make that up? They may have be hesitant, to, you know, reinvest in the community because they say, quite frankly, my budget's changed. And so anticipating our workplace campaigns may be down a bit and just it's kind of the ebb and flow. And you're in, we don't know, right? We're in yeah. the middle of a pandemic and there was no way to forecast the effect, first of all, that it was coming, right? We didn't really know. And then it hits us and we're like, everything is suddenly halted. Businesses have been devastated, closed. There's so much hardship because of that. People have lost jobs. You know, unemployment maybe is going down in our county because people are beginning to find their place again, but still lots of struggles. So that means the dollars may go down, but the needs have gone up. And now it's more important yeah. than ever that we really rally Perfect. around yeah. our community and make a choice to give. And for those who have been so blessed during this pandemic to still be working, my husband and I, yeah. right? Um, I know you and, yeah. you know, your yeah. husband, Pat. We Who's are on? So Hello, honey. Hi, Pat. Um, we're so fortunate to be working and still have our jobs that like, you know, I've made a commitment to like do a little more. Yeah. It's like, you know, and I think if everyone can make that decision that, you know, our neighbors really need us, our friends really need us and everybody's been impacted. No one can say they're exempt from this, right? So I'm wondering if the phone ringing is a phone call from a donor <laughs> who's saying, I can't get the text to give to work. So I want to call you and make that donation. That's right. We're going to take your call live. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the bat phone. It's from Florida. So okay, I, don't know I, I don't know that it's anybody. Probably not. Probably not. But yes, you can call anytime. <laughs> yeah, so definitely think about texting to give. Win a fun prize in the process, possibly. Um, and any little bit helps. So five bucks, you know. Um, and, and if it, you can do it, more yeah, than five, that would be do more amazing. Than five. Yeah. You now it's really whatever you choose. Yeah. yeah. So thank you guys so much for that. Thanks for your opportunity to do that. Support. All right, so we have another question. We'll do one more question um, that you guys have submitted. And this one, keep them coming. We always love to answer. We think about these all week. Today we're doing, what is your, somebody asked Connie Jo Holmes. Am I saying that right, Connie yep. Jo? Yep. Is it Connie or Connie Jo? Well, on Facebook, okay. Connie Jo right. Holmes. Connie, she didn't want us to know. Connie's in my network. Uh, she's someone I've known from Miranda for a long time. We had a wonderful call the other day and realized we have more connections than we realized. Six degrees. Um, just it's just interesting, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so anyway, with that said, Connie yeah. submitted lots of questions. Yeah, she had a good she, one. We selected one of hers, so I'll let Heather read that. So she wants to know what our most heartfelt day was here at United Way. Do you have an answer for that? I, I do. I it. do. So um, I will tell you, there have been so many heartfelt days. And Heather knows this. And for those of you on the, on the line, if you're not familiar, we've done our top 10 moments of each year. And um, oftentimes those heartfelt moments or those, you know, are in the top 10. Mm -hmm. Here's the one that really hit me the most. And I want to say this was back in 2017, 20, it might have been 2018. So I'd been here just over a year and mm -hmm. we had put an ad on the radio with Star 105.5, Joe and Tina, and the hurricane had just hit Houston and it was all over the news, right? That these, there was so much need and people were sending money and it was crazy, crazy, crazy amount of money people were sending. And this young man pulls up in our parking lot and I, I'm like getting in my car. And as I see him get out of his car, 
I think, oh gosh, I better like find out who this is. Is he coming to see me? Does he need something? And I wasn't, I don't remember who was even here, but somebody, maybe you were here, Heather. And I said, hey, can I help you? And he said, yeah, I'm here to drop off a donation. Well, nobody really stops here. Right, right. Nobody comes here. So I mean, somebody pulls up, it's like, what's happening? The United Way office is not a destination. No, so, unless so, you want to see us. And but, so it was yeah. really a call yeah. to action. Like, this gentleman's here for some reason. Yeah. He's a young man, too, like in his early 20s. He reminded me of what I would say one of my friends. Young, tall man with blonde hair. And I'm like, hey, how can I help you? And he's like, I'm just stopping in to make a donation. And I'm like, what? There's somebody stopping to make a donation. This doesn't happen, right? So he came in. He handed me an envelope, a white envelope which would have been like the size of a personal check. Right. And um, he said, here it is. And I was hesitant to open it because I thought, is it right to open it while he's here? And I said, you know, we don't really ever have anyone stop. So can you just tell us the story why? And he said, and then who you are. And so he said, my name is Malachi. I live in Crystal Lake. I work for Enterprise Rental. And hopefully it's mm -hmm. okay I'm saying all this. And he um, said, I've been listening to the radio and they were talking about the needs. And then I started to realize that, you know what, I could send my money far away, but there was flooding in the county and there were other needs in the county. And because we were making people aware of the needs, he said, I'm going to just make that investment right here through the United Way. I don't even think he'd ever heard of the United Way. And that really educated him. He left. Okay. We took a picture. We posted it Which on just popped up in my memories, I think this weekend. Yes. And yeah. when we opened up the envelope, I cried because it was a significant amount of money. I'm not sure I should say how much, but it was it was what takes you to, you can look this up on our website. What does it take to become a Pillars Club member? This young man became a Pillars Club member on the spot. That was awesome. We were, we were thrilled here. That was like a big news it day was, here. It was a yeah. big news day. And I mean, I tell you, I literally stood there and cried and said, I cannot believe that someone who heard this on the radio was so inspired and then not only heard it and considered it, but he took action, right? And he wrote the check and he got in his car on his lunch hour and he drove to the you know, McHenry, McHenry location and dropped it off. And it's just like when people feel inspired and that you know they feel compelled and their heart is full, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about, right? You know you want to invest in this community because it's the community you grew up in. It's you love the community and you want other people to benefit in their time of need. And so we were so grateful for that moment in time. So if Malachi's out there and he's still around with Crystal Lake and listening, gosh, we wanted to say what a blessing you were to us on that special day. We think about it a lot here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It gives, that gives people hope. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I would say you can't really follow your story up with that. I don't know. Could that get any better? But one of my favorite—I'll just say my favorite day days that really filled me is. I wasn't. Um, it was the last time we had an annual dinner. We did a tonight show for you, and so I get the pleasure of organizing. You know the events and doing the behind the scenes. And um, gosh, that was a, we had a huge crowd. There was like an energy in the room. Yeah. We had an amazing amount of awards to companies and people who believe in what we do and support us and champion us all year long and for many years. And so we had fun. Yeah. We did a Tonight Show theme. Um, gosh, it's Johnny and what's Ed his McMahon. name? Ed McMahon, thank yeah. you. I, could, I was trying to blank. Yeah. So I was Ed McMahon. Carol was Johnny or no, Jimmy Fallon, whatever. And we had so much fun and we had people laughing. And I think there was just an energy and a buzz. And it's like, this is what it's all about. Yeah. When you get to come together and see other people who really support us and believe in us and um, cheer us on to keep going. So yeah. that's one of my, that's one of my favorite days. Yeah. I, would, was I would agree. That yeah. was one of, one of my best things. Yeah. Too. And it looked like the Tonight Show it was a really fun theme. And I don't know if anybody was there, give us a shout out if you were um at that night and so that was really our last well we had a kickoff but that was our last big event we didn't get to do that um i was we were trying to think of what could be a fun thing to top the tonight show but we had to go virtual right so i see Lori paris join thanks Lori. appreciate your hi Lori. yeah well so i think that's kind of a great place to stop yeah and we'll um again Submit your questions. What do you want to know? What intrigues you about United Way? Are you supporting? Is there something um, fun that you'd love to share about a story about 
Washington Highway or Carol and Heather, or you want us to come to a road show tour, comedy stand up at your company. <laughs> as, as you can tell, we love to have fun. And in this time of difficulty, when we're all kind of facing uh, a lot, right? No mm -hmm. one's exempt from what's happening in the world. If you're e-learning, you're home with your kids or, or you're trying to work and you're an essential worker and it's just some days are difficult. We want to be the joy in your world. And so make sure you tune in in a couple of weeks. We will be dressed in costume and we will do our next coffee with Carol and yeah, Heather. It's gonna be and it's so gonna be funny. so much fun. And I, maybe you can dress up and you can put your picture yeah. of your costume in the post so everyone can enjoy and we can all laugh and have a great Halloween celebration together. Yes. So don't forget one few things I want to remember. One, it's ha it's boss's day. So congrats oh. and happy boss's day to Carol. Thank you. Um and I want to make sure that you remember that we are unveiling our text to give. And so if you want to text fundraising Friday, all one word to 44321 and make a donation, $5, $10, $1 million, we're going to take it. Um, and then you can be entered into a drawing to win this fun basket. And then we're going to try to keep it fun and do perks as well as don't forget to go to Conscious Cup. This is Coffee with Carol and Heather. So go to your Conscious Cup um, tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday, and put your mobile order in. So if you download Cup, um, the Joe app, I should have brought out my phone. Download the Joe app on your phone. If you don't already have it, select Conscious Cup, type in the code UNITED, and you get 10% off your coffee. Wonderful. How will we do So that? we love them. Thank you, Conscious Cup, for sponsoring us today. And it was fun. Don't forget to have on the, you know, Great resources for Yes. And we hope you have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Love you guys. Love you. Have a good one. Have a great Friday.